The AWS metadata service is a service that is provided to any instance on AWS by default that continues to be a really, really useful attack vector for people who like to um, target AWS and specifically web applications that are hosted on AWS. So to understand how this attack vector works, you of course need to understand what is the metadata service. And simply put, it's literally just a internal IP address that is attached to any given EC2 instance by default um, that provides a set of information that can be used by application developers um, who need their um, application to automatically perform some tasks. So um, Amazon defines it as a, uh, a service that I believe provides temporarily, temporary frequently rotated credentials. Um, and if your train of thought follows mine, you can understand why something like this would be extremely extremely beneficial for for an attacker so um, let's go ahead and talk a little bit how an attack would work and then the realistic variations of it that are most widely seen in the real world so the most basic example of how this kind of attack would occur is an attacker gaining access to an ec2 instance um, let's say using something like ssh so maybe there was a key pair that was laying around and an attacker got access to Maybe there's some sort of shell that they were able to, or a backdoor, I should say, put on the instance. Long story short is that they are able to execute commands on this instance. Um, once that's achieved, they can then access the metadata service if it's running, typically it is, and that metadata service is hosted at 169, if I could type 254, 169, 254. So it's an internal IP address and it is hosted on the instance, and it can be accessed just using simple HTTP requests. Um, from that service, credentials can be gathered and um, exfiltrated back to the attacker. And then from that standpoint, the, uh, the exploitation path is extremely custom, right? So it's dependent on what is actually hosted within the AWS environment that this instance is in, what kind of privileges are assigned to those credentials that get generated by the metadata service, and also what is the attacker trying to achieve, right? Are they trying to cause an outage, maybe exfiltrate data from a service like S3? Do they want to install a crypto miner on a bunch of instances with like a Lambda function? Um, that's where the attack path can kind of balloon into a heavily custom um, series of exploitation mechanisms. With that said, let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like um, from this attack perspective with a, a attacker having access on a host. And then we'll break down uh, some more examples uh, that realistically occur uh, in the real world. Okay, so we are now authenticated to a EC2 instance within a test environment. You can go ahead and put on your hoodie. We are now an attacker, we are a hacker. We have shell access on this host. And if we type ID, you can see that we're the Ubuntu user. That's uh, provision standard with the Ubuntu image that you can just pull off of AWS. So we have shell access, we have command execution. Let's go ahead and start interacting with the metadata service. And eventually I'll show you how you can get credentials from it. So you can start by simply issuing a little curl request or sorry, an HTTP request using curl to the URL that we talked about earlier. And that will reveal a series of different um, paths that you can interact with. Now, the metadata service is um, on slash latest slash metadata. And if we execute another curl a command that makes a request to that route, you can see that there's a whole suite of information that would normally be used by maybe an application developer to perform certain tasks. So you could use this to grab maybe the instance ID number, uh, MAC address, that sort of thing. But in our case, we're not interested in that. We want credentials. So there is a specific directory tree that you can follow. You might notice it already. It starts with identity credentials, but for the sake of time, I'll just paste it in. And what that will do when we request this path is it will generate a fresh um, access token for us. So if you're not familiar with this, this is an AWS access key pair, and this can be used with the AWS APIs to perform additional actions within this AWS account. So after an initial access, 
or I should say initial compromise of an EC2 instance, it's that quick and that easy if an attacker knows what they're doing to get additional access within the account that can be used to maybe laterally move or access alternate services, maybe even throw off detections, right? If you um, are specifically looking for your web application um, identities to be making um, maybe anomalous requests, right? And then all of a sudden there's this key pair that you have no idea about, um, you know, accessing APIs. It's uh, it's a really gnarly exploit chain, but realistically an attacker getting SSH access to your instance is not super realistic. So let's go back to our example and I'll walk through what this looks like in the real world whenever it's chained together with what we call a cert server-side request forgery or SSRF attack. So as far as complexity goes, this is actually a fairly simple exploit chain. It's a couple simple HTTP requests if the conditions are right and it can have a pretty dramatic effect on, a, on an environment. So as far as mitigation goes, what can you do? Well, uh, AWS has released a newer version of the metadata service that you can select on your instances. It's called IAM. DSV2, I believe. Yes, I am DSV2. So what that does is instead of um, allowing a user to just issue a simple HTTP request, um, it requires um, an access token to be used with the service or a session token, I should say. So instead of um, just using get requests, you have to actually um, issue a initial put request, and that generates a token for you that's then used in any subsequent request uh, to the metadata service. So it doesn't actually disable the ability to request um, security tokens, or I should say security credentials from the service. It just makes it a little bit more convoluted. So sometimes when you have an SSR vulnerability, it's hard to um, induce it to make a put request or very custom HTTP requests that you would need. Um, it's usually just a GET request. So this is not a complete mitigation, but it is something that is going to make it a lot more difficult for attackers. Um, there is also the option of disabling the metadata service if it's not used. However, I have not personally researched that. And from what I can see, it looks like there is pieces of functionality that is very handy to have from the service. So that's something where you'll have to Take a look at your web application and what functionality you need and make a, a judgment call based on your use cases. And that pretty much wraps up the attack chain. It's, uh, like I said, fairly simple, but it is something that we, we do find um, within environments. And it's something that is surprisingly um, commonplace and I don't think really going to go anywhere. So. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful and informative. And if you have any questions on the intricacies of this attack chain or any other cloud related concepts, feel free to hit us up at Rooster60. We'll be happy to help.